Prognosis EMR, creating input template elements or bullets. The element or bullet is the second tier in the hierarchy of template design. Now in our series of creating templates, we've been using the analogy of writing a book. In keeping with this analogy, the elements are like the words or the pages of the book, the components that answers the patient's questions or records the doctor's observations during the visit. Now these may be individual to a specific template or they may generally apply and therefore be added across multiple templates. The results for an element can have an appropriate CPT or HCPCS code assigned for billing purposes based on local workflow. And finally, it is the element which determines the content and format of the details that display in the generated output, such as your progress note. So I've toggled in here to prognosis as an administrator, and we're concerned with this bottom portion of our configuration screen under settings, input elements, tests, and templates. Specifically, we're going to look here at the second line. Now you'll notice that the labels are different based on each classification. We have elements, vital signs, symptoms, bullets, and so on. This is customizable per local preference based on a system property. But regardless of the label, the functionality is the same for each classification. In this video, we're not going to look at each individual classification, so I'm just going to go to the specialty element option for our discussion. As with all things that you're creating new, you always want to search first so that you're not creating unnecessary duplicates. So what I've got up here now is a search of every specialty element. If you recall from our creating input template category video, you first start off by creating your categories, which is how you group your elements together. And that category is what we see here are labeled as class name. So in searching to see if our element already exists, you first want to go ahead and search by that class or that category. So let's say we are wanting to create a new element for an injection of a medication. So I'm going to search for category injection and filter it by the test name drug. And you'll notice we have multiple. You'll see that the name can be repeated and that doesn't necessarily make it a duplicate because if we look over at our class name or the category that we assigned, they are unique. We have injection bursa, injection Botox, epidural steroid injection, trigger point, and then other. Sometimes your elements may be very specific, or sometimes it may be general, and you want to apply it across multiple templates. And that's kind of what we're seeing here. The drug administered for a trigger point for an epidural steroid injection for Botox and for bursa, there may be one or two or three very specific drugs that we use in our practice. Whereas if we have other random injections, patients come in for various types of drugs, whether it's vitamins or weight loss cocktails or whatever, as opposed to creating multiple specialty elements, we just create a general one. And that's kind of what the injection other is demonstrating. But let's say we do want to create a new one. Maybe we want to create one specific for our diabetic patients for the different types of insulin we inject. So I'm just going to go ahead and click add new. And this opens a blank element design screen. Now incidentally, what we're looking at here is how to create an element from scratch. In a future video, we will look at the easier way of duplicating an element. Now there are three mandatory fields to create a new element. So I'm going to go ahead and fill in these three mandatory fields and then we're going to discuss the rest of the fields on this screen. Notice that the system has automatically assigned a code up here in the upper left. The code needs to be unique to each element. The system does default and it will have a two-digit prefix based on the classification. In this example, SC stands for specialty. It would be HP for HPI, VT for vitals, and so on. You can override that if you have a local nomenclature or you can just accept the one the system assigns. So I'm going to keep it with my nomenclature and go ahead and say drugs administered is my name. I'm going to click my binocular to choose my category. Now remember the category is how we group together our elements. That analogy of writing the book, we're associating this new page to our chapter. So I'm going to search for all the different injection categories that I've set up. And in this example, I want it to be specific for the insulin. So I'm going to choose that one. 
and I'm gonna go ahead and click Save. Then going down the left-hand margin, we have Unit, which allows you to assign the unit of measurement you would like the user to input. It will default to both genders, but you can make an element specific to male or female as needed. Sequence always defaults to 1,000 when creating a new record in Prognosis. We will learn in our separate video about sequencing the importance of customizing this as needed when you're building the narratives on your progress notes and your op reports. The active indicator will be selected by default because the system assumes you want to use the element. Now at some point in the future, if you no longer need it, you will be able to deselect this option, which makes it inactive. That would preserve it historically for data integrity, but it would hide it so it could no longer be used moving forward. Non-reporting is available if you want to create an element that you want to document for your own purposes internally at the encounter level, but you don't want it to show up on your progress note. Then we have a CPT hit pick button where you can assign a code for the element. Now we're going to get to that a little bit later when we start talking about our results as well, because that gives us a second level of being able to assign our billing code. Group number is not going to be discussed in this video, but there is a separate video dedicated to sub-templates and subgrouping, and that is when this would come into play. So now we want to take a look over here on the right side. You have the ability of predefining remarks that would default for the user to select from on the input template screen if you would like. Those, of course, can also be added ad hoc in conjunction with an encounter. The most important piece, however, is the result type. Now, you'll notice here in my drop-down, there are various result types to choose from. In this video, I'm just going to give you a definition of each one. And there are going to be separate video devoted to the result types themselves because of the different behaviors associated with them. The type you choose determines the level of interaction the user will have on the encounter screen when completing the template and in turn, it will determine the content and format of the output for that element result on your progress note. So we're just going to go through each one of these result types and give you a brief definition. Boolean allows you to define two values, and when you're answering the element, you would choose one or the other. And if you notice here in my value set, only the top two choices are enabled, and whenever you're defining multiple choices, you do have the ability of indicating one or more of those choices as abnormal. And that's what this ABN column is for. So in the example of a Boolean, it may be normal or abnormal, denies or reports, yes or no, something to that effect. Now these next three items are very similar. Your set of values, multi-select, and pick list. I'm just going to go ahead and choose the set of values. You'll notice now I have more than two choices available in my value set table. This allows you to predefine up to 40 choices. Now the difference between the set of values multi-select and pick list is with regards to how the user interacts when they're answering that element on a template. All three of these allow you to predefine up to 40 choices. However, when you're answering the question on a template, set of values will allow you to choose only one at a time from the predefined list. And it is a static list that you cannot add additional free text to. Multi-select is also a static list of predefined values, but the user is able to choose more than one at a time. Pick list is a multi-select list that also allows the user to insert additional free text or to create a new response if an appropriate one is not predefined. Numeric and fraction take numbers only, no text. Numeric is whole numbers only. Fraction is decimals. Score allows you to predefine multiple choices and assign a weight or a value to each of those choices. For instance, maybe you make clinical decisions based on a numeric scale of mood disorders. At the end of the template, based on the answers that you've made, SCORE will allow you to create a tally, and then that numerical value can help you with your treatment plan. Now, text and notes are free text, and that allows alphanumeric digits and some special characters as applicable. The difference is text will limit you to 512 characters, 
notes is up to 5,000. So when you need to answer just a sentence or two, text is sufficient. But if you want to put an entire paragraph or more, then you would want to choose notes. The date and when options both provide a calendar lookup icon on the template. One is yellow, one is white. The white calendar, which is what goes with your date, forces you to enter a valid date. Month, month, day, day, year, 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 year. Whereas when will allow you to enter a specific date or an approximate date, such as 2007, without a month and a day, or seven years ago. Master Search will give you a binocular icon, which allows you to open up one of your system level master files, such as users, diagnoses, CPT codes, and things of that nature. Image will allow you to attach a JPEG or a PNG file, if relevant to have as part of your template. Clock time is going to allow you to click the element and then whatever your existing time is, as shown down here in the lower right in your system clock, that time will be saved into that element at that moment. Tag allows you to bring in data from somewhere else in the patient's charts and have it display on this template. Whether that would be their date of birth, their height or weight, or maybe their chief complaint for the day. Now these last two typically you're not going to use yourself because they're going to require some engineering assistance on our part. But getting back here to the new element that we're creating, I'm just going to go ahead and add in a couple of different types of insulin. Maybe we are going to just have generic insulin, or maybe we want to use a couple of uh, name brands. I'm going to go ahead and save those choices. Now earlier we mentioned the CPT Hick Pick button over here on the left, which is at the element level. Well now we also, if you notice here in the value set, have another CPT Hick Pick button. And at this level it's based on the result. So if, for instance, I'm going to bill for the actual medication, maybe there's a J code for the particular drug, each one of these can have a separate one. So for instance, if I highlight my insulin, you see that it's the one selected in blue, and I click that CPT Hick Pick button, I can look up the appropriate code for my insulin injection and then go ahead and choose the appropriate one. So I'll just choose the J1815. And so now you'll notice that I have a check mark on my CPT Hick Pick button for the insulin as well. So I can go down with all of the different values if there is an appropriate CPT or Hick Pick that I want to bill and attach it to that result. So when the user chooses that specific drug, the underlying J code is what would actually get billed. Now the last part of element design would be the report sentence. I'm not going to go into all of the different scenarios and options as we discuss that in a separate video. However, the basic tags that you would want down here to make sure something comes out on your progress note is going to look something like this. If you leave it blank, even if you choose an answer, nothing would come out on your progress notes. So you must specify something down here in order for the system to map the data to your output. The one exception with that would be the Boolean, which we will cover in a separate video specifically about Boolean results. So in review, elements and bullets are the second tier in template design. These are the components that capture the patient's answers or the provider's observations during an encounter. Elements may be individual or shared amongst multiple input templates based upon the assigned category. As applicable, billable CPT Hick Pick codes may be defined either at the overall element level or based upon an individual result. And finally, the element is what determines the content or format of the details displayed in your generated output.